as temperatures and humidity climb across the Midwest, people are often going to feel a significant difference with those changes. Mike Fowle, the Science and Operations Officer at National Weather Service out in Des Moines, joins us now to talk about corn transpiration or better known as corn sweat. Mike, thanks so much for joining us first and foremost this morning. How are you doing? I am great. Happy to be here and chatting with you today. And about a third of Iowa is corn, which means you guys have a lot of corn sweat to deal with. Can you explain to the people at home, people who are not familiar with how the Midwest works in the corn, what exactly is that? Yeah, so the, the term corn sweat, uh, it's kind of an interesting uh, sort of term. It's really uh, the scientific term, more precisely, is what we call evapotranspiration. And essentially, that's the combination of uh, when you have standing water uh, that can evaporate into the air, and then you can also have the plants transpiring or growing. They basically absorb the water and they release it to the atmosphere. And in doing so, that can have a huge impact on the amount of moisture in the air across the Midwest, including states like Iowa, where our dew points or humidity can really soar during this time of the year due to that combination of the, uh, and we've been wet around here as well, the evaporation and then the corn and beans growing uh, actively this time of year. So how is it impacting Midwesters right now? Because we're seeing a lot more humidity in the air. We're seeing those temperatures climb. How is the corn, set impact, corn sweat impacting the weather right now? Yeah, so right now we've, we've been actually in, in quite a wet pattern across the Midwest. So we've had, number one, a lot of rainfall. So the crops are really healthy at this time of the year. And because of that, we have some uh, standing water and things like that in the fields. And then again, with the crops growing in that standing water, it, the, those crops are releasing a ton of moisture uh, into the atmosphere. So in Iowa, we have about 13 million acres of corn on average planted each year. And then uh, each day, um, corn can add about 4,000 gallons of water per day per acre. So if you do the math, that's about 52 billion gallons of water per day that corn can basically re-release into the atmosphere, which again, makes our humidity soar, the muggy meter soars, and it becomes pretty uncomfortable. We're just, if you've been down in the, you know, the Gulf Coast, we're just as humid as the Gulf Coast this time of year, which some people may not realize. No, I mean, definitely something that I wouldn't have realized until I learned about it. And as you forecast coming into the summer months and kind of based on the crop, does your forecasting pattern and how you guys forecast out of the office change? It, it can. So like this year, we've had kind of an interesting summer. It's been, uh, it's a very uh, green, I would say, compared to how it usually looks this time of year. We usually kind of get into a drier period across portions of the Midwest in mid-July. This year, we've seemingly had rainfall like every three days, which is just perfect for growing uh, corn and beans, which we have a lot of. And because of that, again, the humidity levels have been much higher this year than they have been in other years. So uh, those who have been out and about, like those out on Ragbri, are definitely feeling uh, that moisture in the air this year, more so than other years. Um, so that's the big impact that, that that corn sweat has. It's on the humidity. The temperatures can actually stay down a couple degrees, but it's offset more so by that amount of humidity increase. So it's going to feel uh, really miserable out there, really sticky, really sweaty. And uh, that's how it's been for a lot of the month of July. Yeah, you, you mentioned rag bite there. So that's where people bike across the entire state of Iowa. So you're saying people should just expect things to be really muggy, really sweaty. What are some tips for safety that you might have for participants of rag bite, especially if they're maybe not from the area or familiar with this pattern? Yeah, for those who don't know, rag bite is, is the longest, uh, essentially in the world, the longest recreational bike ride. And uh, there's several thousands of participants each year that, that yeah, basically bike across the state. So it's, it's a big event here. And yeah, for the ride this year, I mean, it's, it's always held around this time of year. Uh, it's typically warm and muggy, but this year even more so because of, again, the, the state of the moisture we have and the crop growth, it's even more humid this year than it's been in other years. So that's what they're dealing with. The one thankful thing I will say this year is we've had a little more cloud cover than typical. So that has kept temperatures down a few degrees, but we are expecting like as an example today and tomorrow, probably two of the hotter days of the um, It's, uh, it's gonna be highs in the nineties 
and heat indice values well into the uh, 100 to 105. So we're just asking folks to drink water, hydrate, and uh, we are watching for some storms as well. So we'll have what is a kind of an added sort of complexity there as well. But uh, yeah, for those folks that are doing it, they many of them do it year to year, and just taking some common sense approaches, and and uh, and they'll they'll stay they'll be okay. Great. Well, Mike, thank you so much for joining us and bringing us some of these uh, interesting facts and letting us know how the corn sweat impacts the weather. We appreciate your time.